Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this Tuesday and feeling a little better, which is good. And let's uh, take a look. I've decided to come out with two early call snow forecasts for these two waves that are coming up the East Coast. The first one is for late Thursday night into Friday morning, and the second one is for uh, Saturday. So let's look. This is the first one, and this is what I'm thinking here. Uh, this is at this t at the moment because the first system looks a little more moisture starved than the second. Uh, I'm going for um, uh, about an inch or so uh, throughout much of central New Jersey until you get south of Route 195 where I have a little area of one to two inches. And I have that uh, inch or so extending over Long Island, coastal Connecticut south of, of uh, 95 and so on. And I, I think it's possible too that maybe parts of eastern Long Island could get maybe that might I could have probably drawn maybe a one to two inch area for the Twin Forks. Uh, you go north and west of Route 78 and you start to get to a uh, coating to an inch that extends down into south central Pennsylvania and uh, into uh, northern Maryland uh, and uh, into north central Maryland. Uh, I put uh, Delaware in the about an inch or so area. Uh, the coating to an inch is, extends uh, north of 95 uh, to just south of maybe Route 84. And, and then once you go north of 84, some scattered snow showers, maybe there might be a coating with that. Now, the second system, and I'm, you know, I'm looking at some trends on at least the European and the Canadian, which seem to want to go a little bit to the left, especially the European today. So I've kind of leaned in that direction. <clears throat> there are a couple of reasons why I'm doing this, uh, and I'll explain that in a second. But... I think there's the potential. This is going to be very, very tight. It's going to be one of these deals where you can go a matter of miles and have absolutely nothing to a, a, a coating to maybe, you know, a couple, a couple of inches. So, you know, north and west, uh, northwest New Jersey, uh, the Hudson Valley, you go into Putnam, uh, Dutchess counties. Uh, this time around, I see nothing up that way. So that's where, where I draw the back edge of this line, the black line here running from uh, Frederick, Maryland, to Lancaster, to Reading, Allentown, and then uh, continues up uh, into eastern Warren County, uh, <clears throat> on up to the Rockland Orange border, and then north of there, uh, straddling along Route 84. So just south of that black line, uh, I have this band of a coating to an inch, and that would take us probably from, from about Baltimore to Chester, PA, uh, to just <clears throat> west of uh, Trenton, uh, to uh, Edison in New Jersey, across New York City, and then into southern Connecticut near Stamford, uh, up uh, north of New Haven, and then north and east of there toward Wyndham and beyond. So there's that coating to an inch. And then south of that line, so south of Route 78, looking at a band of one to two inches uh, that would fall, uh, across uh, eastern parts of New York City, Nassau County, northwestern Suffolk, uh, into uh, north cent uh, the central coastal Connecticut and going northeast from there. Two to three inches in southeastern Connecticut uh, for central Suffolk County out to about Riverhead. I put that area in a two to three inch band with a three to four inch possibility for the Twin Forks. And then for southern New Jersey, uh, basically, you know, from cut across Ocean County, uh, from Tom's River, uh, and then swinging southwestward through Burlington County, through uh, Clam, uh, Camden, Gloucester, uh, Gloucester, and Salem counties, uh, a band of two to three inches, and right along the immediate coast, uh, up uh, maybe to about the southern end of Barnegat Bay, you know, going down southward from there, looking at maybe three to four inch amounts. My confidence factor, I want to emphasize at this point, is pretty low, because this could wind up, of course, shifting to the right, in which case you could pull that, that black line down further south. But this is going to be very close with the second one. So uh, we're going to have to pay close attention to model trends uh, over the next uh, couple of days, obviously. Now, one of the reasons why I, I want to be a little cautious here that this might start shifting a little bit further to the west is that the... North, North Atlantic Oscillation, the measure of the amount of blocking that we have in the atmosphere, goes from an extreme negative reading today to almost neutral by Friday and Saturday. So if the blocking is weakening, 
Now, this might allow more of a westward track. I mean, that's the logic I'm using here. I'm assuming that this forecast <clears throat> of these index indices uh, is going to be a correct one. So if that's the case, um, you know, I think it stands a chance that you could have a slight shift to the left. And you really would only need a slight shift to the left. It might not be enough weakening in the blocking <clears throat> to shift the first system to the left far enough, but it might just be enough to catch the second. We're, we're not going to know that till we get there. So let's look at the NAM model first. And of course, we've got this soaking rain that we're having today with this raw northeast wind. So that finally ends and, and we see weather conditions gradually improving. Now you start to see this system coming out uh, from the west with a small area of snow across uh, Missouri into Illinois and Indiana. There's not even a real low there until you get to uh, Friday uh, morning where it starts to form a low just south of uh, Wilmington, North Carolina here. And you've got this band of snow that it carries across Pennsylvania into southern New Jersey. And then it kind of concentrates it in southeastern PA, uh, northeastern Maryland, northern Delaware, New Jersey, Long Island for Friday morning. Then starts to develop some heavier precip by Friday by Friday morning, 7 a.m. daybreak. But you can see that darker blue is pretty far south and east. There's At this point, uh, the snows on the radar are diminishing as the low is, is pretty far out here, although it does kind of want to throw some back to eastern Long Island for uh, Friday morning, and then out it goes. And then you start to see the development of the second area of precipitation with some snow across Oklahoma, Arkansas, into northern Mississippi. This is mostly light stuff. And you've got rain, a cold rain in the southern half of Louisiana, Mississippi, into Alabama. So at this point, the system is pretty weak. I'm going to switch to the GFS. And now the GFS has the furthest east track. For the first time, the GFS actually is bringing on this run with the first system some snows touching Long Island and almost to about New York City. It does get it into southern New Jersey and into Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, and so on and then moves it on out to the northeast. And, and you can see with the second thing, it's suppressed. Uh, it brings cold air down. Uh, it's got some kind of system here up in the northern lakes. And I think that, a, a, that acts as part of the mechanism to suppress. And it winds up taking the wave pretty far out to the east, where it's of no consequence at all. The Canadian European models are a little different. Uh, and I will show you the Canadian. And I wish I could show you the uh, precip versions of the of the of the G, of the European, but we just we can't because of licensing issues. Here's the first system with the Canadian, again kind of close, but not close enough with the first one. Although it does skim the coast with some snow, I think in both cases it's the coast that's going to wind up getting more out of this than anything else. It does bring some uh, decent precip though across Virginia through north central Maryland at least uh, into uh, the Delmarva Peninsula into Delaware with the first system, and then you have the second system. Uh, that comes around and it's a little further to the left than the prior one, uh, bringing snows into North Carolina, Western South Carolina, pretty much all of Virginia, the Delmarva Peninsula, and at least the southern half of New Jersey to Long Island and southeastern New England. I think part of the problem is that you've got this um, a disturbance that looks like some kind of secondary front that's pushing down uh, that probably prevents this. Since these Systems are not really phasing. You know, this system is still pretty far to the west. It's, it's acting more as a way of kicking this out rather than, you know, you know, digging into it and lifting it up uh, along the coast. Uh, we'll um, jump to the snowfall maps, and then I'm going to go to the upper air, so we'll take a look at that. So this is the run total of snow on the Canadian model. So this would encompass the two days. So I'm going to switch first. We'll go to the 24-hour total. And I'll get a little tighter. So we'll, we'll get a little bit tighter here. Um, we'll start with the this northern area. So you can see, <clears throat> again, these are run totals. So, oh no, I switched to 24-hour total. I'm sorry. So this is probably a, a fair represented, re representation of the timing for the first one, which would go from Thursday evening, 7 p.m. to Friday evening, 7 p.m., that snow that falls in that 24-hour range. And, the Canadian, uh, the lighter blues with significant, uh, you know, basically that coating to an inch. I stayed pretty close. The Europeans' idea is almost the same. You know, it has some higher two to three inch amounts along coastal New Jersey. And now here's the snow run totals for the second 
system. So we'll go from Saturday, um, uh, Saturday 1 a.m. to Sunday 1 a.m. And you, you, you can see here there's, there's three, four-inch amounts along coastal New Jersey. There's three to almost six-inch amounts over eastern Long Island and into southeastern New England. Uh, which it has in, in an area of six plus because of how the low is stretched out and how it's tracking. But notice that back edge, uh, you go into northwest New Jersey, you go not too far up the Hudson Valley, there's nothing. So this is going to be primarily a coastal event, and we're just going to watch to see how it shifts. It does, by the way, produce some pretty significant snows across southeastern Virginia uh, of six inches plus. And in fact, if I'll stretch this down and we'll go to the southeast U.S. Um, view, and you can see the southern edge of this snow. You know, it has actually a band of six six inches plus going uh, into uh, east central, eastern North Carolina, east, east and northeastern North Carolina, um, getting significant snow out of this. And even down along the Carolina coast, you're seeing uh, some snow, some snow back into South Carolina. And let me just roll back. This band of snow, by the way, takes it across. Um, you know, it, ban it bands up a good solid three to six inch band of snow across the northern half of Mississippi, northern Alabama, north northern uh, Georgia, northwestern South Carolina. So um, if, if this model and the European model are correct, there will be um, a pretty significant snowfall uh, for the south. Uh, so, uh, you know, that seems pretty clear. Let's <clears throat> go to the upper air now. And we'll take a look at what's going on uh, with the uh, with the with the jet stream flow and these troughs that are affecting us. And you know, here's the Canadian. You know, here's the first system is is kind of hard to pick out because you've got all this cold air that's just trying to overwhelm. But there is right in here, you can see this 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 kink uh, in the jet stream. You know, but the actual low at this point is still way out ahead. Of where the support is so this is moving away to the northeast and then you've got you know the, the jet stream flow as it is and here's that system that we're watching for uh for saturday and now as the trough nears the east coast you know you look at this upper air and you can't help but think that you know that this is not really that far away for some for something troublesome to happen because if you look at the 500 it you know it's not quite phased, but it, it would not take very much if this northern stream system were a little deeper and a little faster where it would catch the south. And then instead of having this broad looking trough like this, you know, you might have something um, a little bit more, a little sharper like that. Or maybe I'm exaggerating there to some degree, but, you know, a, sh a sharper trough would probably mean a low closer to the coast. So, I, you know, I, I think that there's enough margin for error and certainly a lot of time because we're looking at now going into the fourth day um, it, with regards to this. The uh, European model, which we only have in 24-hour increments, um, and, and we'll see this, uh, same idea as the Canadian. And, you know, there's the trough, and, and you can kind of see it. This is for Saturday morning. You know, you've got this northern stream system here. You've got this one here. They're pretty disjointed. At this point, the trough is still pretty broad, but then when we move it out to Sunday morning, of course, at this point, um, everything is going to be done. You know, this is the point where the, tr the troughs kind of phase. So, you know, you want this to happen a little bit further to the west. So you want that to happen you know, back by, uh, you know, at least 100, 150 miles further west. If it could somehow, the northern, if the northern stream winds up being a little bit faster here, and 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 catches up to that southern system you know then you could wind up with a much deeper trough a little bit further to the left instead of taking the low you know out this way you know you'll take it out more this way okay and that um that small change that relatively small change makes a big difference in what could wind up you know in terms of snow amounts for coastal areas so um i, I think you know my, again, my confidence level on all this is pretty low at this point. Um, we're going to just have to wait and see, as we always just have to wait and see. And uh, I'll just give you a quick look at the long range. We'll go a little wider because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still uh, amazed at, you know, just how 
volatile and different the models are. The European, you know, after the system lifts out, you get a bit of a ridge that builds in the east. But, you know, the European still kind of want to make, wants to maintain some semblance of a flow out of Canada. Uh, and, you know, you've got, you know, weather systems that are moving along in that southern jet. The, the flow is very split out in the Pacific. So that continues to feed in Pacific systems. It's a question of trying to get <clears throat> how, how, how you get that cold air uh, to be to, to come in and hang around for a while. You know, you look at the GFS, and the GFS is different. The GFS continues to want to pile the energy on in the west. So you really don't have <clears throat> that cold flow into the eastern states. You still have this sort of split in the Pacific, but uh, you this is a big problem here. Uh, where uh, you've got the main emphasis of the cold upper vortex out in western Canada. You do have a strong block in the Atlantic here uh, on the uh, GFS, so that's something that we're going to have to consider over time to see how um, it, it winds up uh, impacting all this, and again, assuming it's real. And you know, you can see over the time, the GFS kind of starts to change a little bit as we move into uh, mid-month January. Uh, as we start to get this flow from Canada attempting to get reestablished again. Now, whether that holds um, together or not, or whether that's real, I don't know. I mean, it seems to keep wanting to uh, envelope the, uh, the block, uh, the connect, uh, bringing the block off across the poles so that it forces the vortexes a little further south. But, you know, you still, you know, have issues to resolve. And I do want to go back one, one second, one last time to the um, teleconnections because uh, they do show something with respect to the Pacific North America index, the PNA index, which has been off the wall negative for the longest time uh, going back to the beginning of December. Um, it wants to forecast to, to, to go neutral and then positive around the 15th, 16th of January, and that would be a significant change. A positive PNA uh, is produces ridging in the west, and that um, would be offset by troughing in the east. So that's something you know you we want to watch out for a change in this PNA pattern, uh, which has not been favorable for storm development in the eastern states. And as far as the NEO is concerned, you know it trends back to neutral, goes very slightly positive for a couple of days later next week, and then goes slightly negative after that. I think the general tendency for the NAO is to be neutral to negative. The East Pacific Index, which is strongly negative right now, and that's what's bringing that shot of cold air for the uh, Thursday, beginning Thursday and lasting into the very beginning of next week. But then, then that trends to neutral, and that goes positive uh, toward the end of the period. Now, these things change from run to run, obviously, depending on what the models do. But, you know, we're going to watch these indexes. Again, I just want to, you know, point out what I said earlier, the NAO, you know, going from sharply negative to neutral in a very short period of time, um, it's almost neutral by the time we get to the weekend. That might be something that could nudge this thing a little bit further to the west, the uh, second low. I don't think it would be time to save the first low, but maybe with respect to the second low. So uh, we will keep you updated, of course. I have my snowfall forecast maps with a discussion on uh, my website, meteorologistjochaffee.com, so you can go to the link which I'm posting and uh, download my app subscribe to my forecast if you'd like uh, the app is free forecasts are just a buck a month for new york new jersey long island connecticut hudson valley and eastern pennsylvania and if you're new to my youtube channel and you've lasted this long into an almost 20 minute video i'm assuming you liked it so if you do please subscribe to my youtube channel that's free and uh, you'll get notifications when i put up youtube videos which is usually at least once a day and doing storm situations uh, probably uh, or as we get close to developing storm situations. I usually put up two videos a day. So have a great rest of your uh, Tuesday, um, and we will uh, check in again. I'll probably put up something up tonight before I uh, head, for, head for bed when the new model runs come in.